Hello, and welcome back to the Conscious Contact Podcast. My name is Janae Peavy, and I'm here with Philip Siegel. I met you through my friend Pepper, but you are big in the Greensboro community. Um, would you talk a little bit about how you got involved in that? I know that's probably a long story. Yeah, it's it's long, but we can cut it short a little bit. Um, I'm the uh, manager of Havana Phil Cigar Company, and uh, we're... I guess you could say a staple in the community. Yeah. And uh, we love to uh, sell many vacations on Battleground Avenue. And uh, you should stop by sometime. Yeah. I've, Pepper's been trying to get me over there. And we're always either out of town or already out doing something. But I love the social media coverage that you have of these events because truly it is always something special, unique, different. And I'm obviously not in the cigar world at all. However, when I moved to Greensboro, I guess I was in my soft end of my sophomore year, beginning of my junior year. Havana Fills was like one of the first things I saw in Greensboro. And I was like, wow, this is a, I'm from small towns. So let me preface it with that too. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is really fancy. Where are you from? Alabama originally. Okay. What yeah. city? So Montgomery, Prattville area. Yeah. Okay. Don't recommend. Um, no. Alabama's fine, but, and I've got some family that lives there out in the boonies, but mm. Montgomery specifically was really difficult, but. I moved around a ton. So I lived like in a tiny town, kind of near Nashville and Tennessee, lived in Galax, Virginia, and flip flop back and forth between all of those for a long time. So yeah, yeah Greensboro is really interesting, but Havana Fills has been around for as long as I've been here. And it was, it was something that I was like, okay, is this like in the movies type of cigar bar? And I've still never been there, so I don't know. Maybe you can clarify, but it to me it felt very much like if you step into there it's going to be a different world yeah i think um i think we definitely have a, a different atmosphere than a lot of places in greensboro yeah um, we have three different lounges uh two of them are public um one's indoors and it's kind of homey kind of like this kind of vibe yeah. very comfortable and then you go outside and we have palm trees out there we have latin jazz going we're serving cocktails. Sometimes we have food, live music, and uh, you kind of feel like you're in Miami. Yeah. And then you go back in the private lounge, and it's kind of like a Manhattan speakeasy back there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you do have like legitimately three different like ecosystems. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I definitely yeah. did not know that. I knew about the private members area because mm -hmm. Pepper's always shown me pictures of that. Yeah. It looks and, sick. And Pepper's my sister. Um, She's also a chef and yeah. she does holla and all of that. I'm sure your audience knows that. Oh yeah. But um, you know, for events she'll she'll cater it sometimes and even she'll she'll create an experience like um a made to order pizza or something mm. like that. Yeah. I I always think that it's interesting when you combine all of those things. I don't necessarily always think of cigars as being paired with food, but I've heard it's kind of like a wine thing like there are certain things that you can eat with certain cigars like chocolates and you know different mm. stuff like that again i have no clue about that world at all and i don't smoke anymore i used to mm. but is there do you find that people are intentionally seeking that out in greensboro like how big is your pool that you're kind of drawing from and does it cater more towards like older clientele or people that are our age um i would say the our typical client isn't really seeking out the pairing aspect. Mm. That's something we create on a special occasion. Yeah. Um, but there are guys who are, you know, they call them cigar nerds, where they'll sit in their house or garage and review a cigar and pair it with a chocolate or ice cream or a nice steak and wine, that mm. sort of thing. Yeah. But the typical customer isn't really doing that unless we put on the event. Yeah, so you're genuinely educating people mm -hmm. during these events as well. Yeah. And you do serve the greater Greensboro community. I don't know if there's anything like this in Winston, not that I've seen talked about at the very least. And you seem to draw very large crowds when you have these things. How long have you been putting on like larger experiences like that? Um, I would say it started back in 2010 when we opened. Uh, my father, he started it. Um, and he had very good relations with the manufacturers. And so he would have all the big celebrities in the cigar industry come to Greensboro 
And that's that's the draw for everybody. Because mm. they want to meet the face behind the brands. Oh, like okay. Rocky Patel, Monte Cristo, Davidoff, you name it. If they're in town, we're going to draw a bigger crowd. Yeah. So the, And it is legitimately celebrities in that realm. Yeah. That's really cool. Because mm-hmm. I think Davidoff, I think of like the aftershave from like the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, yeah. Pepper didn't know what I was talking about mm-hmm. when I mentioned that to her. I don't know if anyone's ever brought that to you. I'm assuming it's the same company. Yeah, I have uh, their cologne in my house. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I I would have never known that they made but cigars. It's not the same company. It's, gotcha. They just use the name. Oh, so because, it's like a licensing thing. Yeah, they're based out of Geneva. So it's, oh. it's like a high-end luxury brand. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. How do you feel... Like, I know we want to get into, like, serving the greater Greensboro community and not only drawing people here to have experiences, but drawing people here so that they can see what Greensboro has to offer and potentially make an impact in that way. Is there, like, a specific vein that you've thought about that you want to make the most impact? Because we were talking before we started recording, Greensboro's got a lot that we could work on. Mm -hmm. And for being a decently sized city... I feel like there's a lot of potential still left, especially downtown and then on the battleground area. Right. We've got a lot of, you know, concrete places that have been here forever, but we've got a lot of turnover. And I don't know if you ever see that kind of manifesting in the people that are coming through, people that move here and then leave. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people that are our age are either moving back here and starting a family with kids or they're getting the hell out of here and going to California for God knows what reason. But I don't know if you have seen that kind of turnover in your clientele or in your events or people speaking out uh, and kind of saying, hey, we, we love what you're doing. We wish that this was expanded into a certain different arena. Yeah. I mean, we, we get a lot of suggestions. We get a lot of, uh, bet, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> requests, but the turnover, not so much. Um, we kind of have our our base customers uh, and they're like in the corporate like volvo mac trucks mm. uh honda jet the bigger companies in greensboro and also the smaller businesses um so we have a lot of stability in that area but the younger clientele we definitely see a lot of turnover yeah and we are constantly gaining new customers which is i would say that that comes down to marketing for sure i i am always curious as to like, how can we make people that are in the younger generation stick around Greensboro? Because hmm. I, I am in talks with the synagogue and, and the temple, and they're feeling that too, specifically, you know, having young families stick around and not take jobs in larger cities. I'm not a big city person, so I'm never going to get it. Even Greensboro right. is big for me. We're getting ready to move out into the middle of the boonies, the middle of nowhere. Nice. And I think Greensboro is great. I personally dislike Charlotte, though. Just from going there, it's too much for me. But why? Just a uh, overstimulation. Yeah, yeah. And just from growing up and like going to high school here and like visiting Charlotte was the big city. Mm-hmm. I just don't like anything that they have to offer. It's definitely geared towards a different kind of lifestyle than I want. Also, because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't party, I don't go to clubs. I'm making myself sound really boring. Mm-hmm. Um, I and I am for for the most part. I'm an 80 year old woman on the inside. It's okay. But it, yeah, Charlotte is just Charlotte has a great food scene. That is what I've heard. Mm-hmm. But it's like once I eat, what the hell am I going to do there? <laughs> That's true. Then I just got to drive back home. Catch some live music. True. Do you know any places that are good there? Um, I mean, if you go to Noda, mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty popular, or South End. They have live music everywhere. Really? And it's every night. Is it more like um, country or pop? or? Because honestly, the only live music I ever want to see anymore is going to be jazz or blues. Yeah. Um, I think it's just based off the venue. Gotcha. Um, it's kind of like Greensboro. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like Greensboro is pretty similar in that. Like the music scene, it's all pretty all much the, the place. same. Yeah. 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 No, agreed. Do you, like, what do you have coming up next, I think, is what I'm interested to. Like, what kind of experience are you getting so, into? So, March 9th, next Thursday, we have um, <clears throat> we have one of the master blenders from Monte Cristo coming in. And he created the number one cigar of the year last year. Oh, 
Oh, shit. Um, so he's kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to have live music there. We're going to have food. We're going to have a liquor tasting. We're going to, you know, pull out all the stunts for this guy. And for anybody that's listening that may have come here because they know that I'm in recovery, you do you guys have, like, elixirs or, like, mixed drinks that aren't alcoholic? I know that's kind of a random question, but. Yeah, we, we – uh, we make everything custom so we can create any cocktail on our menu without liquor. That would be great. Yeah. I know that that's some places don't really want to do that because they lose out on the money from the liquor. Uh, and some of these like non-alcoholic mixers though are extremely expensive. Really? Have you dabbled in that at all? Like the Ken stuff. I think that's one brand that I've seen a lot. There's some that come in like liquor bottles mm -hmm. But it is like aromatics and fruit juices and stuff like that. But it's like twenty seven dollars for something without liquor in it. Oh no! Yeah, I know. That's too much. It's a it's a pretty high markup. Yeah. All of our cocktails are eleven dollars. Really? And we use fresh fruit, um, dehydrated uh, garnishings. Uh, everything's fresh and it's not like pre made. Yeah, that's mm. sick. Yeah. Do you do you have a lot of people come that don't smoke cigars? um not really <laughs> i was gonna say i don't even know how yeah. you would track that but yeah I, I mean we have guys who want to do business in the lounge and they don't really smoke cigars often so oh yeah. so kind of like people that use like a starbucks to work on the internet they would mm -hmm. use your place as like a business spot exactly that's pretty smart for them though mm -hmm. do you ever give them any kickbacks if their clients buy anything or if they purchase anything um no because they're doing so much business back there yeah i mean there there's millions of dollars a year in business done in our lounge really yeah is it mostly in the cigar industry or no it's just local business over there. wow mm -hmm. if i know that um who is she talking about the he's a jewelry designer and a cigar maker matt booth yeah yeah she said that he would be someone really cool to come see oh yeah just because of his personality yeah i mean he's larger than life how do you handle that as a business owner? What do you mean? Like, is there anyone that's ever come that is getting a little too rowdy or someone that wants stuff that you can't provide for them? Or I don't know if you've ever had to deal with someone who has a legitimate, like, celebrity personality. Um, so the cigar industry is different. We're kind of all family. Yeah. Which is why I fell in love with it um, when I was younger and got in the business because it's just everyone loves each other and we all want to help each other out yeah so this guy like i've known him since i was a little kid and when he comes to town it's like how can i help you oh wow and then he's like how can i help you so it's more of a partnership in that industry but as far as celebrities go like like if they come into the lounge they're gonna want free drinks free mm -hmm. cigars all that stuff but we don't really give into that we're yeah. like you can use our place but I'm not going to give you free product. That's smart, though. Yeah. I, I think that tip for tat type of relationship is extremely important, especially in a smaller city like Greensboro is. I don't know. Have you ever uh, done any collaborations with like any local food spots or any other businesses? Like, do you have pop ups for mm -hmm. something that might not be related to cigars at all? Yeah, 100%. Um, most of our events, we cater from uh, Cal, mm -hmm. my sister. Yeah. Um, Giacomo's. I still have not eaten at Giacomo's. Oh. I know that's heresy. Yeah, it's the best deli in town. That's what my friend says. She's from New York, so I trust her yeah. pretty good with that. Their bread is top notch. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. All right. Well, that's on my to do list. It has been for a while, but the I've had a, multiple people tell me recently that I need to do that. Still haven't been a cow either. Yeah. Which is an issue. But. I mean, you. Sounds like you need to get out a little more. I do. Honestly, I do. I'm too busy playing mahjong with. My old lady friends. <laughs> <laughs> my the, my grandma plays that. I love it. I she absolutely love it. star mount like every Wednesday. Oh, man. Yeah. It's the best. Like truly. It's, I mean, it's kind of like when guys get together to play poker. Mm -hmm. To me, that is what it feels like. Yeah. And you get just the juiciest gossip and the personalities are so different even within playing groups mm -hmm. like someone might get an attitude with somebody else and you see how that play like it's really good people watching and genuinely everyone's excited when someone wins what's the average age uh 70 
<laughs> I might bring that average down a little bit, not yeah. by much, but yeah, no, it it was something I didn't expect to get kind of pulled into. Mm-hmm. And it I feel like it is one of those things that most people aren't in, enmeshed in that kind of world. Kind of, I would assume kind of like cigars. It is a small community mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things. And Is it competitive? Oh, God, yeah. And are you gambling money? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. It's like 25, 50 cents a hand, but there are people that play for a lot more. Yeah, I mean, it's like playing the slots, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There is, it's, I mean, it's poker and dominoes have a baby, and that is Mahjong. Sweet. Because there's specific hands that you have to get, you know, without getting into the weeds on that. But yeah, I guess pretty competitive. You should do a, um, a Mahjong night at Havana Phil. Oh my God, please. And you would have so many people come to that. <laughs> at Greensboro is like a hot spot for Mahjong too, really? which is mind blowing to me because there's Star Mile and then um, there's a community. There's like a community club that hosts Mahjong two days a week. Wow. And they set up like 20 tables and people come and play. Hmm. I have yet to visit that, but I'm just... Where do you play? I Everybody's houses. Okay. So gotcha. I've been really lucky to kind of meet okay. people that play Mahjong and we kind of rotate homes and sometimes they'll be here, but like every week you'll go to somebody else's house. Hmm. So that's been really cool too, getting to... And I'm super, super Southern, so I bring something when I visit people's house for the first Mm -hmm. time. And I'm not pissed anyone off with it yet, but I think it kind of is confusing to a lot of people, especially a lot of the Jewish women that I play with because they've come from up north. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, what are you, what is this? So what do you bring them? Flowers? Flowers, plants, candles, food, not all at once. I'm not crazy. I feel bad I didn't bring you anything. No, no. See, and that's the (laughs) other thing. Like, I never expect that from somebody else right like that is not how my brain works like i'm just i'm not wired that way nor do i expect people to live the same life that i'm living that could be a whole conversation but it is something that i like to do brings me joy but i could give two shits i don't even notice if somebody else doesn't do it right because that's not that's not the point yeah. for me anyway well, that's good yeah you don't you don't have expectations Zero expectations, because yeah. then I'm just going to get my feelings hurt, mm-hmm. even if I do set them. You know, like, people are fallible. Right. That's how it's always going to be. And if I set my expectations on the ground, mm-hmm. I'm going to be constantly surprised with how good it is, you it's know? A beautiful way to live. I, if, if you can manage it, it's definitely, like, an up-and-down scenario. Mm-hmm. Some days I feel that way, some days I don't. But right. definitely credit recovery with giving me that, because, like, old previous life Janae definitely not about that yeah wouldn't have thought to, I one I wouldn't have been invited to anyone's house to begin with mm-hmm. would not have happened uh, and I wouldn't have cared what they thought of me when I showed up you know it, it is I don't know if you have ever gone through something like that where you have like an old version of you that is kind of like in the background in the shadows and yep. sometimes you think back like damn I was a piece of shit sometimes yep <laughs> Yeah, I definitely went through that in high school. I At got least it you out got early. Out early. Yeah. yeah, lucky you. Yeah. Shit, <laughs> I was in my mid twenties by the t- I was your age. Yeah. By the time I had figured it out, I I think in Greensboro it's kind of harder too because it is such a small community. People are still around that remember that version of me, and I kind of have to reintroduce myself right. if I meet those people again. I haven't really because I don't hang out in the same places anymore. Right. But. It is this thing of like, how do I not tell them, but how do I show them that this is going to be a different interaction without being super intense and aggressive? Like, hey, my name's Janae. I'm an alcoholic. Because yeah. I don't want to do that either because right. I think that can rub people the wrong way too. Right. I'm lucky. Um, everyone that knew me before is out of town. Oh, that's so nice. So I only have to see them at like Thanksgiving or Christmas time. Damn. Yeah. I wish. And then it's just like very casual and yeah. I don't have to explain anything. I'm just like, yeah, this In is what out. I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit jealous. But I'm not going to really, lie. You don't have to explain anything. This is true. Yeah. This is very true. And that's something that I have to remind myself too is I just am who I am. Unless it's someone that I was decently close with which then that would probably warrant a completely separate conversation. Right. Like, hey, here's my new number. We need to talk sometime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. I need to apologize for some things. Yeah. Uh, but I have kind of run into that 
with doing this podcast, weirdly enough, like I've had some random people reach out to me that I don't ever need to talk to again. Like, hey, we should link up for the podcast or whatever. And I just delete the message. They, really? they can't tell that I read it. There's no reason for me to interact with that person. But what if they had like a big social media following? I, I feel like that would be like bad motivation for me to want to do it anyway. Yeah, but isn't this all about page views? Not really. No. I And only because I am in a very lucky situation. Mm -hmm. I don't need this to make money. If it does, that would be fucking sick because it's a passion project, but I'm I'm financially in a place where I don't have to to make this make me money. Mm. So, I don't I'm not motivated by that at all. Okay. Which I think can be really confusing for some people. If there was one celebrity you could have on this couch, who would it be? Oh shit. Um <laughs> Honestly, I'd probably pick someone that was semi-controversial mm -hmm. because I do like to have like super respectful conversations with people that I disagree with just because I think there's a lot of growth that can happen in that. And I don't see a lot of respectful trying to understand one another conversations in that regard. Um, Russell Brand, I think, would be. Oh, that'd be electric. Really interesting. Just be, I want to pick his brain over so many different things. Um but I mean, even like Nancy Pelosi, like I don't agree with her on really anything, but I would love to try to understand her as a woman and someone that's paved the way for women legislators in all areas of life. Because I, I do still respect her as a human being. I think that's another thing that's kind of missing out too, is when people have those conversations with someone they disagree with, they don't see them as human anymore. Right. And that changes the narrative because then you just want to attack them. But it's, she's so well trained. She is. So like, you would have truly to do some serious some prep work. Some digging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I, and I, I hope that I've done that for you. I want people to feel comfortable mm -hmm. to talk about whatever the fuck they want to talk about, yeah. to make it a genuine conversation or to not talk about anything. It doesn't right. matter. Like just for it to be genuine, I think is kind of the point. And I don't know with her job description that she could be candid. No. Yeah. No, no, no politician. <laughs> I'll wait till she's out of office. <laughs> yeah. But even then, she's still going to be guarded. Yeah. Oh, for sure. She's yeah. got a legacy to protect. And right. if you're running for office, I don't trust you. Oh, yeah. God, no. Yeah. No. I, and not even I don't trust you. It's just like, I want to know like who you were on your worst day. Right. And then I'll trust you. Yeah. Cause you, we've all fucked up in some way, shape, or form. Like, I want to see the nasty parts, you know, not to judge, but to, like, be on the same level. Like, I'll give you mine, too. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm very open with what an idiot I've been throughout my entire life and probably still continue to be. But I know that not everybody is comfortable with that. Right. And it takes multiple conversations to, to get that out in the open or to know that someone's not there to attack you mm. either. Right. And what is the name of your podcast again? Or have you? Uh, it's called that? Behind the Smoke Screens. And you're going to start that back up, right? Yeah, we're we're working on that right now. Working on the back end? Yeah. Well, I, wanna, I want you to answer the same question. Who would be like your end all be all guest on there? Ooh, that is a tough one. I mean... Probably to make it more relevant, I would choose somebody in the cigar industry. Yeah. Um, and I've had a lot of them already. Like I've had Matt Booth, who we spoke about earlier. And I mean, he's one of the most interesting guys in the world. He makes cigars, jewelry, and gin. Oh, um, shit. So he's in all sorts of different, uh, you know, industries. And he's best friends with Guy Fieri. <laughs> oh, like, wow. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> He's out there, just eccentric and really, really uh, interesting guy. But I don't know. I mean, maybe um, somebody in the NFL, NHL, a superstar. That that would be really, really cool. Yeah. Maybe somebody who just retired that could tell some awesome stories about what they went through in their life of being a superstar. I, yeah, I think that that is infinitely interesting just because I cannot fathom 
how it would feel for people to know your face everywhere that you go. Right. Like that's something that I would never want. Yeah. Like <laughs> or chase Aaron, after. Aaron Rodgers would be a great guest. Oh yeah. Because he's doing ayahuasca in the off season, and I want to know why he looks so sad all the fucking time. Well. Yeah, he's I going don't know. through it. He's making like fifty mil a year, so what? I don't understand why right? he's so sad. Yeah, and why? I mean, you can have whatever length hair you want, but come on, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you just spent like three days in a dark New York City apartment. That, that is what he looks like. And I that, don't know if that's the actual case. That's like how he <laughs> like relieves himself. What? Yeah. I mean, I guess to each their own. That sounds like a bad spiral to me. I don't know. He's he's on to some crazy, you know, spiritual stuff. He might need that alone yeah. time then. We'll we'll try to find his PR contact. And if I can, <laughs> I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'll luck. see who manages him. That'd be great. <laughs> and if you'll send um, the link for that interview uh, with the cigar guy, I think yeah. that that would be great for people to listen to as well to get a kind of feel for what you guys are doing over there too. Cause yeah. Greensboro is small. So we got to support each other. And I think your setup is sick from what I've seen you film at the cigar shop, the episode that I watched, I think. Mm -hmm. And that backdrop, I mean, talk about moody and setting the scene. And you which one was it? Um, I think it was a girl. Mm -hmm. And was it the patio or inside the lounge? Inside the lounge. Okay. Yeah. I think that that is really interesting. And I think you guys were smoking while you were recording. Always. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense here in the in lounge. The second and third season were sponsored by McDonald's. Get the fuck out of so here. We would have like all these sandwiches like right <laughs> in the middle. Did you do like a mukbang episode where you're just shoving your face full of food? Well, every like every start of the podcast, I would take a bite. Uh -huh. like whatever they wanted to feature for that episode and i would have to promote it how how did that work out like the behind the scenes stuff of that did you have like a rep that you worked with specifically or yeah so i'm friends with um adrian smith he owns uh, i think he's at over 50 mcdonald's uh locations god damn <laughs> yeah and he was actually one of our best interviews all time. Really? Yeah. So I mean, I'll being an you, entrepreneur. I'll send you that one. It's very, very inspiring. Yeah. Like his family, um, they started flipping burgers and then bought their own McDonald's. And wow. then they got him flipping burgers and he had to buy his own McDonald's. And it was just this awesome success story. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I There's so much hope in that and I don't want to say that that's completely lost on like the generation after us but I wonder sometimes I think it is <sighs> like I don't know about you but my first job was at Pizza Hut mm. so I don't the whole mindset of I'm never gonna work like a regular job as a, a child basically like from whenever you can get a job in North Carolina I'm not sure I moved around a lot I think 16. 15 16 yeah wanting to jump right into I and just because of my fiance people want to jump right into like I'm going to be a YouTube star I'm going to be mm -hmm. an influencer I'm going to whatever right. I don't think they necessarily see the failure rate of that right where if you go to a job and you get a paycheck you can legitimately start building your life from there I think it would be important for people to hear from someone like him who started working mm -hmm. somewhere and then eventually now owns his own locations yeah I feel like we're just not going to see those kind of stories. No. Or people want to get into Bitcoin or, you know. Yeah, especially <laughs> with like OnlyFans and Instagram and Yeah. It's just DoorDash, like people are making their own Oh, true. Schedules. Yeah, the gig economy. Mm -hmm. I this might completely askew our conversation. So, I may or may not keep this in. <laughs> but you said nothing was off limits, so yeah. I figured I would yeah. ask. What do you think or here, let me narrow down the question. And I'm going to talk about women specifically. Would you date a woman that had an OnlyFans? Hmm. Would you marry a woman that had an OnlyFans? I don't know. I'm not married and, you know, but I probably would date a girl who did have an OnlyFans. Yeah. But I would want to manage it. 
Ah. And I want a little percentage. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because I love creating content. Yeah. So. I think that that if you're going to go down that route, mm -hmm. I think that's the only way that it makes sense. Yeah. Especially as it's people in a relationship together. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what it is. Plus, I know what the people want. Exactly. So you I, would be I, the best person to ask. Yeah. yeah. I think I could be the best OnlyFans manager in the world. Now, what if you all decided to get married and have kids? Uh, we would have to end that. You'd have to end that? Yeah. Now, how would you feel? Like, you can't scrub the internet. Right. What would be, like, would you be okay with that potentially lingering? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I guess you kind of have to be. Yeah. I think, I think, um, I, I think that, like, most people have made videos or sent mm -hmm. photos that yeah, yeah. that they wish they could scrub, mm -hmm. but they'll never be able to. No, the internet's forever. Yeah. <laughs> but if you talk about it, it's a federal offense. True that. So Yeah, if you're copying stuff from a copyrighted site or something that you have uh, intellectual property rights over, mm -hmm. it's a very different story. Right. And if you've got the money to sue people, it's not really going to matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you save some of that OnlyFans money. Yeah. Is that something that, like, you've run up because I feel like every woman I know has an OnlyFans. Have you dealt with that in the past? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Um, we actually did an episode on behind the smoke screens with a cigar influencer. And she gets the strangest DMs, uh, <laughs> lots of requests for <laughs> things. And this one time, this guy asked her to meet her at a Starbucks because he wants her or he wants to lick her boots Mm. Dirty leather boots, like once a month, for X amount of money, <laughs> and and he wanted to meet at Starbucks to like, you know, set the payments up and like yeah. make it like this subscription thing. Yeah. So we we see that all the time with yeah. like bartenders, employees, and especially bartender. I mean, yeah, I've bartended before, and I think that those are like the most mundane like not scary requests like i could totally see that being completely fine if i was single and in my early 20s yeah like why not especially something that doesn't involve nudity or proof that anything has happened i would totally let why somebody not? yeah or like feet pics i think that that is genius cuz i'm never going to get it i don't understand it mm -hmm. however I, well i can't do it cuz i have tattoos on the tops of my feet they're recognizable so if i wanted to have like complete secrecy or whatever it would be out the window immediately right. but for young women i am kind of in the middle in this gray area for that kind of stuff i because i do see as someone who was not on only fans but in that type of industry for a while i am lucky that i did it before there was like proof but it is something that you do kind of have to walk back a little bit and i do still see people sometimes they're never going to say anything to me and i understand that but it is this middle ground of like do i regret it no not really do i wish i would have saved more of that money uh yes mm -hmm. definitely and i do feel like there are ways if you want to be in that industry to do it in a safer way now than there was then yeah i mean i think only fans is a very safe way yeah for you don't sure. have to interact with anybody i don't think no you don't want mm -mm. to yeah so it's like a private subscription base. So yeah, I think I think that it could be a useful tool. And in the same token, I I am like in my old age, uh, getting a lot more conservative about that type of stuff, especially like previous life experiences. And I do wonder about like these women when they have grandchildren. <laughs> you know, like yeah. that can get kind of dicey. And I mean, you can explain it all you want. But there is a certain like a how how much are you thinking about this before? Yeah, but I'm sure you play mahjong with with some ladies that you could see would have done that if they were oh, in their twenties yeah. today. Oh yeah, for and sure. They would own it, and they'd probably have great <laughs> stories and talk about it, and you know, it would have been much more mundane for them because it would have been like what the fifties, sixties, yeah. and they would have like shown an ankle and. In a magazine, yeah. you know, right. see again, like if there is an avenue for that, if there's like ankle only fans, hundred mm -hmm. percent on board with it. Like oh, that yeah. kind of, you can get into a fetish category 
without necessarily having to produce nudity. And if someone wants to do that, I don't give a shit here, there, anywhere. I think that that's great for them if they've thought about it. They've got a good uh, retirement account going, like make sure you pay your fucking taxes, that type of stuff. But it's how do you tell as a kid, because I'm sure you've experienced the same thing, like how do you know what is a right decision at that age? (laughs) I think it's just what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Because it's it's similar to the cigar industry. That's it's like a fetish for some guys. Really? Yeah, that's huh. You know, most of our bartenders, when they come in, they start making content with us and then they get all these followers. Interesting. And then they get sponsorships and then they get DMs and people are paying them for like ten second videos of them just smoking a cigar. Huh. And it's like these guys say the strangest things. And <laughs> And they're paying for it too. Yeah. But you, they don't have to do anything. They're exactly. Just, they're just working. They're already getting paid. Yeah. But then other people are paying them on top of that. I think those avenues are genius. Yeah. Anything that you can do in that regard that that you are already doing to begin with, like I'm sure there's a fetish for people typing on a keyboard somewhere. You know what I mean? So if, like, yeah. if you're dictating for a doctor right. and you just put a video on your hands mm-hmm. – why not? Yeah. I think that that's a much better idea than just trying to be an influencer, whatever the fuck that means. Um, you know, using what you have in the industry that you're in in a productive way, but making sure that you're protecting yourself yeah. for the future in that regard. Yeah. And you're just, you you have that steady income and then you just get extra on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. I have people in my DMs when I hold the cigar. They like like my hands for some reason. <laughs> Holy and, shit. Yeah. This is the seedy underworld of the cigar industry. It's very interesting. <laughs> Have you okay, I guess the where I kind of wanna end this is on on this question, which you might not have an answer for. What is the weirdest DM you've ever got? Mm. I guess on your business page. I'll be specific and say your business page. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I mean, we could get personal if you want. <laughs> we'll, we'll just save it for the next one. Uh, this one guy, he thinks that I'm a girl, as Havana feels. What? So he'll just constantly DM me in like my request uh, category. Oh. And he'll be like, do you like tall men? <laughs> like, I'm 6'6". Six, six. Like, dude, this is a business. So. Do you talk back to him? No. No, no, no. No? No. You should set up a PayPal with like, Rachel something and definitely get him to send you money. That's not a bad idea. Right? He might listen to this though. So Well, I'll give you like 10% because you're my manager. All right. Now. That works. I mean, I'll, I'll be down. I'll tell you what to say. You just Perfect. forward him to me. Yeah. I'll just give you access. <laughs> Holy crap. I guess you, there are a lot of women on your, your Instagram feed. So I guess it would be easy to assume that someone that's female is running your, your stuff. If they see more than one picture of a female, I mean... Men are weird. Like, no yeah. offense. But, like, no. the greater population of men oh, who yeah. are not socialized mm-hmm. can get really weird. I'll put yeah. it more specifically that They just way. sit behind their keyboards. Yeah. yeah. And I think Instagram has made that really accessible for people. And I don't know how good that is mm-hmm. for people's mental health. Again, that's a completely different episode. But Have you seen Pepper's comment sections? Yes. Wild. Yeah. Wild West. It's so funny. All over the place. Yeah. People keep, like, people will come, even on my stuff, like, uh, send it on Carolina Vibes. Yeah. I get that one a lot. Um, Those are just bots. Yeah. I don't understand that mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. Um, I probably should since I am on the internet. But, uh, for instance, Luke had this, I guess it was a month long of people saying something about Waffle House on his videos and i mean it would be hundreds of comments of the same thing and then people replying with the exact same thing i love waffle house i mean i do too but i don't fucking understand like how does how does that happen how does that infect social i guess it's like anything if something is popular enough and people latch onto it if it's catchy if it's whatever right i just i i don't understand the inner workings of social media um i need to take a course on that so if any of you guys know how it works Please let me know. I need to pay yeah. someone some money to I teach me. I think it's me. just ever changing. That's the annoying part. That's why I don't want to learn. Because I'm like, I can't post pictures anymore. I got to post reels, making a joke or mm. using audio. And 
that's just not what I want to do. Right. And I feel like that means that I can't be successful on social media. No, there's different ways. And if you just stick to it and stay consistent, then that's my other issue. Eventually, it'll just build and build and build. We we hope so. Yeah. Well, we want to build this following. So if you are only listening to this and you can't see us, you're missing out. You need to go to YouTube and look up Conscious Contact Podcast. You can see it as well. We'll have links for everything that we talked about down below and links on where to find you. And in case they don't want to click on a link, can you tell us what your social medias are? Uh, Instagram at Havana Phils. And we just released our vodka. So at Havana Phils Vodka. And you're photo shoots for, for that have been sick have you Thank been you. taking that with you on trips and stuff like the yes. bottle yeah how do you is that just in your checked luggage i guess uh sometimes i'll check it sometimes i'll just have an empty bottle oh and then fill it up with water so That's it looks like genius. vodka yeah the sneaky side yeah. of instagram no i didn't even think about that that's a much smarter option yeah well sick and subscribe to the youtube channel and if you already subscribe to what is it Conscious contact. Unsubscribe and then resubscribe. There you go. I love that idea. Yeah. Engagement. It doesn't matter what form it takes. And <laughs> like and comment too. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. I hope that we can have you on again and we'll go into something super weird next time if this wasn't weird enough. Yeah. Next time we'll have to do it at the lounge. Yeah. That would be sick. And so, we'll have Pepper on there too. Oh my God. I don't know if you're going to have enough time to have that conversation. Oh, that'd be like a three hour one. <laughs> We'd probably get in a couple fights. But I, I would love that more yeah. than anything in this world. Put me in the middle and I'm just going to let you guys talk the majority oh, of the time. You'd be the mediator. My younger sister has been asking us to get a mediator for years. Oh, my God. Yeah. I would love that. I would love to have her on, too. Yeah. Whenever she's in town again, I think that that would be sick. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Well, keep an eye out for that, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Love you guys.